Hello, and welcome to another instalment in the Law and Order video series, where I look at and unpack stories from games. Previously we explored Blair Witch, and if that wasn't mind-bending enough, today we're going to be going even more mind-bending in talking about Alan Wake. Originally coming out back in 2010, the game which was heavily inspired by Stephen King and Twin Peaks got the remaster treatment earlier this year. It shared everything that the original had, great gameplay and a linear plot, with better facial animations and nicer graphics. I thoroughly enjoyed playing through it again after all those years, but let me tell you, the story was still just as confusing. Now, there will be spoilers in this video for Alan Wake and Control, so if you haven't played the games and want to, here is your 5 second warning. Don't say I didn't tell you. The year is 2010. A man named Alan Wake is driving rather fast round a winding road and all of a sudden he hits a man standing still in the road. Shocked, he gets out to find the guy dead, looks around but when he looks back again the guy is gone. He comes to his senses and heads to a lighthouse. As he's heading down the road he is attacked by a strange shadowy figure. He runs at him and Alan has to run away. Receiving a gun and a flashlight from a mysterious figure in a diving suit, he has to defeat the shadow people with light and shoot them to kill them. He has to run for his life towards the lighthouse as what seems to be a dark wind or a tornado is eating up everything in his path. He gets to the lighthouse and then he wakes up. It was all a dream. Alan, who is a best-selling crime fiction author and his wife Alice, photographer, are headed on a vacation to an old mining town called Bright Falls in Washington. A break which, they hope, will help Alan through his two-year-long writer's block. Alice drops Alan off at a diner to pick up a key from a local mechanic named Carl Stuckey. However, when he gets there, a strange woman approaches him and tells him that Stuckey can't make it and hands him a key and directions to the cabin they rented. They go to the cabin located right smack bang in the middle of Cauldron Lake. Alice wanted him to try something new, so she arranged to have a typewriter put into the cabin and she mentions a doctor called Dr. Hartman, who helps creative people overcome their difficulties and Alan freaks out, overreacts, shouts at Alice and leaves the cabin. All of a sudden, Alice screams and Alan investigates. However, Alice is gone, seemingly having been dragged into the lake. Alan dives in after her, but seems to black out and wakes up somewhere different, what seems to be one whole week later, having crashed his car despite having no memory of it. Alice is nowhere to be seen. Alan makes his way to a nearby gas station, but on the way he's attacked by the same type of shadow people from his earlier dream. The mysterious figure drops a manuscript to Alan's feet and he reads the front page, Departure by Alan Wake. It seems that an idea for a book which Alan had no memory of writing was in his hands in front of him. He soon finds that what is written in the manuscript is coming true. Along the way, finding more manuscript pages from this book that he has seemingly written himself, he manages to make it to the gas station to use a phone. He calls the police, but when he mentions his wife, Alice has gone missing while staying at the cabin in the lake, the officer, Sheriff Sarah Breaker, responds and tells him that the island that the cabin was located on doesn't even exist and hasn't existed since the big volcanic eruption of the 1970s. Officer Breaker has Alan checked out by a local doctor at the police station. Alan lies about his symptoms and the doctor tells him Sheriff Breaker wants to speak with him. She has charged his phone for him and he gets a phone call. It's a man who claims to have Alice and he tells him to go outside to check an old junker. It's Alice's driver's license. The kidnapper wants to meet Alan at a place called Lover's Peak and he'll hand over Alice in exchange for the finished manuscript for departure. He then receives a call from his agent Barry who has arrived in Bright Falls. Later on, Alan meets the kidnapper at their agreed meeting place. Alan briefly sees the mysterious old woman who gave him the keys to the cabin and the kidnapper and after confessing that he never even had Alice, he and Alan are thrown into Cauldron Lake by a dark tornado of some sort. Alan, to his bewilderment, wakes up in a lodge under the apparent care of Dr. Emil Hartman the doctor that Alice mentioned when they arrived at the cabin. Hartman claims that Alan is suffering from a psychotic break and that the bizarre goings on are simply imagined up by Alan. Lo and behold, the mysterious dark force attacks the lodge and Alan manages to escape with Barry's help, but not before he finds out that Hartman was the one who ordered the kidnapper to stop Alan from leaving. Alan and Barry start to learn what is actually happening and the mysterious dark force is called the Dark Presence, which is trapped beneath Cauldron Lake. The Dark Presence is trying to use the lake's apparent power to get out. The Dark Presence had grown strong enough to influence the residents of Bright Falls to attack Alan. Alan and Barry get drunk, 
but Alan has a vision of himself writing Departure the week before. Alan realises that the Dark Presence took Alice and is holding her beneath the lake in order to manipulate Alan into writing so that it can escape. He is guided on what to do next by a song by the local band The Old Gods of Asgard. Before they can make a move though, Alan and Barry are arrested by an FBI agent called Nightingale who locks them up in the Bright Falls Police Department. However, the agent reads one of the manuscript pages, realising that what he is reading is happening right now, and before he can react in line with what was written on the page, he is dragged away by the Dark Presence. Sheriff Breaker, who did not believe it was a real threat, is now convinced by the Dark Presence's existence, and she helps Alan and Barry reach a lady named Cynthia Weaver, who seems to know all about the Dark Presence and its dangers. She takes them to the well-lit room, which contains an old light switch called the Clicker, which possesses some sort of ability that can defeat the Dark Presence. Alan leaves to defeat the Dark Presence. Alan encounters the mysterious old woman and defeats her with the Clicker. Alan jumps into the dark place, sacrificing himself so that Alice can escape, and she emerges back into reality again. Alan sits down to complete departure, but is himself now trapped in the dark place. The game then ends. There are of course two DLCs which add to the main story. In the first, The Signal, Alan finds himself in a surreal version of Bright Falls, but realises that he is in fact still in the dark place. Alan is directed to follow a signal through a phone in order to try and guide himself through the dark place. He encounters some TVs which show himself, but a version of himself which is more maniacal and disturbed by something. This version of himself calls upon dark forces and taken to attack Alan. Alan finds out that he himself is the reason that he is in the dark place. That the character on the TV screens is simply an irrational version of himself consumed by fear. Alan destroys the TVs but realises that he is still in the dark place. And then in the second DLC, the writer Alan discovers that Irrational Al is still controlling the dark place from the cabin and Alan must fight back control to stand any chance of escaping. Alan arrives at a lighthouse despite being accosted by Irrational Al and reaches the cabin. Forced to fight off illusions of Barry, Alan enters the cabin and finds Irrational Al on the floor, but the two merge together when Alan touches him. Realising that this irrational version of himself came about from the fear of not being able to escape, he realises that he can't just carry on fearing that and sits down to write a new book called Return. So let's look at our protagonist. As we know already, Alan Wake is a best-selling crime fiction writer who, when the game started, was suffering from two-year writer's block. We learn through sections in the game that as a kid, Alan was afraid of the dark, so much so that his mother gave him an old light switch named The Clicker, which had the power to banish darkness. Despite not really knowing his father, Alan was given the impression that it belonged to him. This helped Alan overcome his fear of the dark. It was as a child that Alan became best friends with Barry, who of course would later become his agent too. Later on in life, after having his first story published, Alan got a job being a writer in the series on television called Night Springs. His script, which he wrote for his audition, depicted a secret organisation called the Federal Bureau of Night Springs, an organisation which investigated parallel dimensions. This launched Alan's career, and he wrote a six-book series called Alex Casey. Alan was actually a violent man and drank heavily. He later met Alice, and they got married. After Alan gets writer's block, this leads us to the events of the game, and Alice and Alan head to Bright Falls. This is one name that comes up a lot in the events of Alan Wake. So, who exactly was Thomas Zane? I mean, we only see him in a diving suit occasionally. Thomas Zane, prior to his death, was a well-known poet who wrote a lot about Cauldron Lake. He wrote these poems with the help of his lover and his muse, Barbara Jagger. This relationship is what inspired the song by the old guards of Asgard, the poet and the muse. This was until Barbara, despite allegedly being a strong swimmer, drowned while swimming in Cauldron Lake. His assistant writer was none other than Dr. Emil Hartman, who mentioned the legend that the lake itself had supernatural power attached to it and that Zane could just write Barbara back into reality. He was successful, but Barbara brought back something we know as the Dark Presence back with her. This Dark Presence possessed Barbara, and feeling like his Barbara was still dead, and that this was not the real Barbara, Zane cut her heart out, seeing only darkness within. Fearing what he had done and the damage that had come with it, Zane used the same power in the lake to write himself and the island out of existence in an attempt to reverse everything. This is likely what leads to the volcanic eruption event which is referenced by Sheriff Breaker at the end of chapter 1. Zane, like Alan, is trapped in the dark place, but how did he get there? Well, because Zane wrote everything involved out of existence, he too became trapped. However, Zane decided to leave behind a shoebox with his belongings inside in the real world, as a bail safe of sorts. In this box, the clicker, 
which we see Alan use to defeat the Dark Presence. At one point in the game we see that Alan mentions he had the clicker since he was a kid, and also that Thomas Zane wrote about Alan's childhood. This leads us to believe that these events were written into reality by Thomas Zane himself, and this also heavily implies that Alan's life is purely a work of fiction, driven by the writings of Thomas Zane. Anyway, Zane put on a diving suit, dived into the lake and into the dark place beneath it. He sacrificed his own physical body to the bright presence, which is the presence which helps Alan at points in the game, and after reciting another of his poems, his spirit along with Barbara's continued to live in a parallel world that he had created together in peace. Still massively confused? No worries. So Barbara, as we know, is the woman in black, but what is her role in all of this? So remember that Alan somehow lost a week of his life with no memory of what happened, only to realise that he'd written an entire story in that time? Well, Barbara tricked Alan into writing what was essentially a horror story. She told him that if he did this for her, he would get Alice back. The story latched onto the power of Cauldron Lake and allowed Jagger to take over the entire town, in the process turning residents into mindless, dark-filled entities called Taken, which roamed the town and the woods. The Dark Presence did try on three occasions to enter the real world and I guess take over the world, but failed. Once with Thomas Zane when he brought a possessed Barbara back to the surface, once with the old gods of Asgard, and once again with Alan Wake. Alan, being a pretty sharp bloke, caught him to the fact that Jagger was lying about letting him have Alice back, so Alan wrote Thomas Zane into the story to help him and protect him against the Dark Presence. This is why Alan is able to use a flashlight to defeat Taken and objects possessed by the Dark Presence. He is harnessing and drawing from the power of the Bright Presence. A little complicated, but stay with me. As we already know, this lake houses the entrance to the Dark Place, which we also know by now is a supernatural location. An altered reality, which is basically where reality and fiction blend together. In the game, we can see that Cauldron Lake was considered by Native American tribes to be a gateway to the underworld. It essentially allowed creative writers or artists to bring their work to life, therefore blending reality and fiction. Even the water in the lake seemed to be special. At one point in the game, Alan and Barry get drunk off of moonshine, which uses water from the lake as one of its key ingredients. Seeming to clear the mind of the consumer, it allowed Alan to completely and clearly recall the week of which he had no memory of. The Dark Place is essentially a mirror of the real world above, much like Silent Hill's alternate reality. It's alleged that many dark entities exist in the vast expanse that is the Dark Place, and two of these are both the Dark and the Bright's presence. It seems that the Dark Place needs to maintain an order of balance, so to speak, which is why Alan was forced to exchange himself for Alice's freedom from the Dark Place, and why he is now trapped there. As mentioned, Alan then tries to write a book called Return to try and influence his escape. Whether or not this is a success, we don't know. What seems to be true though is that an entity needs a face, or rather a body, to possess in order to carry that influence and the darkness into the real world. Previously it was Barbara Jagger, but after her? Well, it's very, very possible that Agent Nightingale, who, remember, got dragged off by the Dark Presence, is the new Jagger, as seen at the end of the game. This shows us that if you beat the Dark Presence, you don't really defeat it, you only really defeat the vessel that it resides within. One final thing that caused a lot of confusion at the end is when Alan states, it's not a lake, it's an ocean. Now, some people think that this means the vastness of the Dark Place, an endless void maybe. Not just confined to the size of the lake, but maybe global, or even larger than the actual universe. Some people think that he's simply just referring to the size of the task ahead of him. Referred to by some as Alan Wake's evil doppelganger, it's implied that Mr. Scratch was created by Thomas Zane. We mentioned earlier that the Dark Place needs balance. For example, Alan sacrificed himself so that Alice could be released from the Dark Place. Even though at the end of American Nightmare Mr. Scratch is defeated, this game is more widely considered a spin-off rather than a straight canon. One thing that is mentioned by Thomas Zane is that he states that Mr. Scratch is the one whom Alan's friends will meet on the other side, but what does this even mean? It's made clear that Mr. Scratch wants to open the gateway for the Dark Place in order to let out all the evil entities that live there. This document also states that Mr. Scratch has taken Alan's face and his name. It seems that Mr. Scratch was born purely out of the legend of Alan's arrival and disappearance in Bright Falls and a representation of how people viewed Alan. 
For example, remember that Alan had a violent disposition and he drank heavily and this is often how he was portrayed in the media, even sometimes attacking the media. They speculated about his writing in the Alex Casey novels and people started to suspect that he wasn't really a stable individual, and this explains the unstable nature of Mr Scratch. But this malicious being wasn't all Zane's doing, let me explain. We'd see a note in Remedy's 2019 game Control that urban legends, for example people's opinion on Alan, dictate the characteristics of an altered world event, uh, but we'll dive more into this in a few minutes. This means that Zane didn't create this copy of Alan to be intentionally malicious, but Mr Scratch was made to be this way based on other people's perceptions of Alan. I mean there are other theories for the way Mr Scratch was created. One such theory is that when Alice described Alan to Dr Hartman prior to the events of the game, she could have mentioned his drinking and his violent outbursts, given that she probably met with Hartman near Cauldron Lake and that Alice is an artist too, a photographer, this could be how Mr Scratch was created. Mysterious indeed. Anyway, the Dark Presence possessed Mr Scratch in a way that was similar to how the Dark Presence possessed Barbara Jagger. According to what can be seen in American Nightmare, Mr Scratch was able to travel back and forth between the dark place and the real world, purposely allowing people to see him for a brief moment in order to strengthen this urban legend. Specifically Alice Wake, who was so confused by what she was witnessing and experiencing and as a result contacted the Federal Bureau of Control. Which leads us on to our next point. So we previously mentioned that Alan writing his audition script for the TV series depicted a secret organisation called Federal Bureau of Night Springs. Now those of you that have played Control will be aware that the Federal Bureau of Control was that secret organisation. In 2019, 10 years after Wake went missing, Jesse Faden, who is the director of the FBC, enters a closed sector of the FBC after being summoned to it by an apparent apparition of Alan Wake. Basically, the Bureau is investigating an altered world event in Bright Falls and Cauldron Lake after being alerted to this event by Frank Breaker, Sheriff Sarah Breaker's father. You see, Frank used to be an FBC agent himself, and this is explored further through a comic book series, but I'm not going to dive into that for this video. After Emil Hartman's attempts to use Alan to manipulate reality for his own gain, Hartman was confronted by FBC agents who took all of his research on the subject and took away his medical license. According to the game, Hartman dove into Cauldron Lake in an attempt to study the dark place but ended up being possessed and controlled by the dark presence himself. At some point, Hartman was contained at the FBC but escaped, forcing the FBC to abandon and shut down that part of the building. In Control, the antagonistic force in that game is called the Hiss. And basically the Hiss overpowered Hartman and the dark presence, the two entities merged and Hartman became a different kind of entity who was eventually defeated by Jesse. Anyway, despite it being in the same universe as Alan Wake, Control is a different game, so we won't go too far into that. One thing that is very interesting in the Altered World Event DLC is that Zane appears as Alan. I mean, we know that Zane isn't really Zane, it's just Zane's body possessed by the Bright Presence, as discussed earlier, but it seems possible that this is Mr Scratch just messing with Alan's head, as he seems to be more malicious than we know Zane to be. Oh, but who knows? So it seems from the off that Agent Nightingale has a chip on his shoulder and a real hatred and disdain for Alan in particular. In the game we come across his motel room and it seems that he's been doing surveillance in the town for a while. But why is he so mad? Well one theory that's floating around is that Nightingale arrived in Bright Falls with his partner and Alan killed him off earlier on in the manuscript, so Nightingale suspected Alan was responsible and wanted revenge. But was Nightingale even real? Did Alan miss make him up? Certainly possible. Well, as we mentioned earlier, there has to be a balance in the dark place. Alan can't just simply write himself an escape because there is nothing to replace him in the dark place. Remember that Alan had to dive into the dark place so that Alice could be released. You aren't able to just write what you want. So even though Alice escaped the dark place thanks to Alan's sacrifice, it's mentioned in Control that she's suffered memory loss and possibly doesn't even remember the dark place at all, and likely doesn't know that Alan sacrificed himself for her. She probably just assumes that he's missing, and bear in mind it's been 10 years, so we don't really know what happened to Alice after the interview in Control. This game is so hard to speculate on purely due to the fact that because Remedy are so secretive about, well, everything, there are so many theories floating around on what is actually going on. Some of which include that Alan is simply just asleep, another is that there's an Inception type of situation going on here, 
which is that someone else has written a story about a guy called Thomas Zane, who has in turn written a story about Alan Wake. A story within a story, if you like. But yeah, it seems like after 10 years, Alan is still stuck in the dark place, hoping and waiting for a chance to escape. I guess we'll need an Alan Wake too, given that there are still so many questions left unanswered. It's very likely that this will be the enactment of the return story that Alan is writing in order to aid his release. But anyway, that is it for this one. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, remember to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment down below about what you thought and your theories on the game. But for now, take care and I will see you in the next one.